everybody, Son Goshoku here, and this is a review for Dragon Ball Super Episode 124, The Fiercely Overwhelming Assault, Gohan's Last Stand. And joining me is my fellow co-cast member that plays Tom Pri in my upcoming short film, Battle of Deception, The Linux Virus. <laughs> How you doing, guys? All right, so, uh, yeah, we had that long review of episode 123 with uh, a lot of discussions. Uh, so uh, here you guys uh, have something here to listen to as you go about your daily lives uh, with our review of episode 124, uh, the first episode to air since the news drop of Dragon Ball Super ending. And I actually have a um, episode, I actually have a... Um, a video on my channel that I uh, did, so a link to that will be uh, in the description, or you can click at the end of the video to listen to why I thought it was a blessing in disguise, and uh, Linux and I actually might have more uh, to discuss about that later on, so uh, be on the lookout for that. But uh, staying on, on topic here with episode 124, this uh, episode was basically uh, Dispo taking on Furiza and Son Gohan. Um, so the Beginning of this episode, let's start with, uh, it kicks off with Son Goku and Vegeta doing combo attacks against Jiren, uh, as he, like, I'll let you take the floor, uh, and how did Jiren welcome their new attack, Linux? <laughs> Goy. <laughs> exactly, uh, Jiren's favorite word. <laughs> um, so, basically from that, uh, they do a final flash in Kamehameha combo, and, the I think he's powered in rocks. I don't remember exactly, but did the people did the uh did their fellow uh humans from Universe Six on the uh bleachers say they got him when we all know he didn't? Did they do that? No. Okay. Um, no, they actually. I think at this point <laughs> they've learned to take whatever they get on Jiren with a grain of okay. salt. <laughs> Just making sure because they... Master Roshi specifically said they made a direct hit. I don't think he got away unscathed, meaning we probably heard him, but we don't think we heard him. Yeah, and of course it didn't. Um, it did not. Um, it did not do that. Um, he literally pulled a Frieza. Right. When Go remember when Goku first kicked him into the rocks in their fight, mm -hmm. and Frieza literally just blew up the whole mountain. That is exactly what Jiren did. Right. <laughs> All right. So getting back to Frieza versus Dispo here. Uh, it's one of these things where Frieza is keeping up, obviously, in his final form with Dispo's uh, super speed, and he's not doing very well against him, and Frieza's like, is that all you've got? And I like the part where uh, Frieza grabs him by the tail again, and I'm like, oh, is Dispo going to take off? But no, not this time. Uh, Frieza pretty much uh, gives it to him, and he tries to bargain and one of the nice things about this whole arc is it keeps everyone guessing everyone is guessing what exactly is frieza's going to do what is his true motives in this tournament and he tries to once again bargain with uh bargain this time with dispo but you know all of us know the pride troopers they are very righteous and very much for justice so of course dispo was not gonna let frieza have his way and we get frieza uh going back to his golden form where they reuse the same animation that that he did when he first came back. I mean, it looks good, but I think I they, love that transformation. It, it, I'm sorry, it, it's Please gorgeous. Never change that. It, it, it's gorgeous. <laughs> it, it's gorgeous. And I know, hey, if we watched the Sailor Moon animation, we saw that over. I was hoping they get a little <laughs> new, uh, some new transformations over. Um, but it, it, it's one of those things. Like I wish they would animate it differently, just like even make it quicker, like how we see Goku and them uh, power up super quick. But it is what it is. Uh, at least it looks gorgeous. So right, if you're gonna reuse animation. Might as well at least make sure it looks good, right? <laughs> well, it fit. It just fit that scene so well mm -hmm. because, like, okay. So first off, his theme music for when he uses Golden Freezer Epic. is ridiculous. Epic, yeah. That orchestra drop, then you get the bass drop as he starts. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, the music is excellent but in this uh, in this arc. It, the reason why that fits so well is because. The whole back and forth him and Dispo have been having, he finally has his Dispo to a point where it's like, hey, you don't want to get eliminated. I don't want to get eliminated. Right now, I have the advantage. So, I'd be willing to help you, you know, in exchange that we don't, you know, beat each other up. 
Mm-hmm. Dispo, remembering what Frieza did to Frost. I, I'm, I'm almost 100% sure he remembered what Frieza did to Frost. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, Not even the fact that he was thinking about collaborating with him anyway. Dispo is definitely an honorable pride trooper. Um, But he's not stupid. And that's the one thing that I really, really like about these three in particular, Jiren, Topo, and Dispo. They are highly intelligent, very, very capable fighters. Um, And I just love the fact that Dispo was like, no, absolutely not. Right. (laughs) Like, I'm not gonna... You're evil. I'm not gonna coordinate with evil. And Frieza's response to that is great. Because in classic Frieza fashion, he says, Evil, you have no right to call me that. I remember that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, lo- I love it. Because at this point, Frieza's like, Okay, I tried to make a deal. You didn't want a deal. Now I'm going to have to hurt you. And it's just true to Frieza's character. Oh, yeah, the line. It is 100% true to <laughs> the, his the character. The lines of Frieza is always awesome. I love going back to the early part of this art when Goku's like, No! Stop it, Frieza! <laughs> Don't kill them! And he's like, Well, are they going to be dead after they lose the tournament? What's the difference? In fact, you might as well even say that I'm hurrying up the process. He didn't <laughs> say that. That was a total paraphrase, but it's pretty much what he was saying. Oh, boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Frieza definitely has some great lines. Um, and then let's see. So uh, from there, uh, okay, now I know we're going to have a great time laughing at this one. Uh, so we know Dispo goes to what I believe um, was called the Super Maximum Power Mode by uh, Belmont. Um, maximum was it ma- Maximum Speed. Speed. Power? Maximum Speed of Light Mode or something like that, it, it was... where Dispo's natural. He's already ridiculous. When it comes to speed, but in that mode, he's several times faster than the speed of and, light. In his key, he had the purple key that looked a lot like the Hakaishin, uh, better known as the God of Destruction power, but it's just how fast he is. So it was it was pretty cool, and he actually was able to hold his own with Golden Freeze, even though I think earlier in the arc, uh, he mentioned that he wouldn't be no match for uh, Golden Freeze. I think you you told me that too. Did, didn't he yeah, say no, what that? Dispo says, so Freeze is like terrorizing... Uh-huh the tournament like he's just messing around with little guys and dispo was kind of in that mix and he managed to get behind the rock Mm -hmm. and he literally says yeah i'm not (laughs) i'm not dealing with this guy (laughs) right right but uh he 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 held his own now this is the part i know we're gonna enjoy it and have a blast cracking up at (laughs) so uh topo is still fighting lapis most of you know him better as android 17 in the funimation dub uh in son gohan and so Fuidiza is in trouble, and <laughs> we, we just get this part where Gohan's all like, uh, you go, he's like, Fuidiza! And then, uh, he, I think he says, uh, Dragado! And he goes like, hi! And he just goes like, like right, like, and they just leave. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah, guys, that, he just, di- you, just dips on him. <laughs> for those of you who haven't seen this episode and are going to watch it, if you watch this before you watch episode 124, do not be surprised. That happens. He literally says, Frieza, <laughs> Android 17, <laughs> and then Gohan just leaves. And 17 just goes like, like he right. just leaves. And 17, he just goes, <laughs> right. he nods his head, right, and just dips him. Yeah, sure, leave him with the candidate for the god of destruction. Sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let him fight on his own. Okay, I got you. <laughs> I mean, granted, we've both been getting our butts kicked, but sure, I'll take him. <laughs> Hey, to be fair, 17's been putting a more fight against Topo than Gohan. But... That is true. We'll get into that. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I... Which leads me to, it goes back to what I said in our previous episode. How strong is 17? <laughs> right. Now, this is one of my favorite lines in the whole, I love this part. This is like, this is one of those uh, big alpha parts where Frieza's almost about to get murked and then Son Gohan comes in out of nowhere and Frieza's oh. like, well, well, who, look who it is. But Son Gohan, are you here to help me? Well, we are Universe 7 allies. Are you sure about helping me? I might betray you for real this time. If so, I'll knock you off myself. Fine, fine. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> that was awesome. Just Gohan, just telling him like, and it was interesting because I actually thought um Gohan from when 
Frieza, they originally had their little fake fight because um, Gohan uh, said lines, and I actually think I got the, um, I actually think I have those lines right here in the, um, in the uh, first, ep that episode where they were fighting Frost, there's that, um, what part was that? That was uh, where... Yeah, I think uh, Gohan was saying something along the lines when he's like, yeah, I think he said, yeah, he said, uh, when he hit me the first time, I felt that, that that he wasn't, yeah, I felt that he wasn't serious, so I decided to play along, and Frieza said, if you were too stupid to realize it, I would have never, I would have killed you, so yeah, he says something like, I would have killed you right there, something like that. Um, and so I always thought, okay, so Gohan's no match for Golden Frieza, but here it's suggested that they're on par with each other, so that was interesting, I must have missed that, uh, part in the episode, so we're getting a, a good level for where Frieza's, uh, power scale is, um, but how'd you like that big alpha part, Gohan, just tell them that? <laughs> um, I liked it, but I didn't like it as much as Dispo, mm -hmm. because Dispo had probably the best comeback before he activated his mode. Mm -hmm. When Frieza still has his hand. And remember, when he's fighting, he hits Frieza. He hits Frieza square in the face. And Frieza goes, is that all you have? And then as he starts fighting him, he's like, come on. Is this the fastest you can go? And Dispo says, after he powers up because he blocks Frieza's hand, he looks him dead in his face and is like, you just don't get it and hits him right in his uh, stomach i was like that was that was ridiculous oh yeah yeah, yeah right and this okay back's like you're not the one who gets it yeah oh boy that, that was good stuff um so then um so this fight um i really like once again more playing up on the strategic side of fighting here uh so you have <laughs> put Frieza. that man in a cage pretty much uh, <laughs> i uh what, what would we call this a frieza death cage or something <laughs> where uh -huh. he shoots uh -huh. his, uh, his his beams basically shooting out and they basically narrow the field for how fast dispo can move and it's just gohan and dispo duking it out one-on-one -on -one, and um it's kind of like an electric fence type of field uh effect so he knocks dispo in there and it basically uh, electrocutes uh i guess shocks him you could say and gohan ends up getting hit to it and they just get into a fight and they start playing the really awesome music um gohan starts making a comeback and he's like basically putting everything he has into all these punches to try and get it out and this is really cool because you actually see how much of a team player frieza is and you gotta believe with that scene you know you would rather trust the devil you know than the devil you don't know you don't and with yeah. this you know he knows the if anything is for certain they don't universe seven doesn't like him he doesn't like the people in universe seven but they have they there's that familiarity with them so they understand that if anyone's going to have their backs for this it's going to be this it's, it's going to be them and um so you frieza actually is a team player here so i really love uh the one scene um um that uh we had here where frieza is just in complete desperation mode so it like i like that scene a lot uh and the way that uh it was delivered by ryusei nakaho uh F fudiza's voice actor because uh it really showed the desperation and showed like how yeah frieza actually is a team player uh <laughs> line where he's like damn it what is taking so long this attack is quite draining you know your job is to defeat him hurry up <laughs> I, 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 I love it because like yeah he actually is trying here like wow this is uh this is really cool he actually is trying here and the way they they did this where uh son gohan backs him up in the corner is about to deliver the final punch and then fudiza his um his energy his key gives out because he couldn't hold his stamina so we're seeing fudiza's um his uh he still has the stamina issues in his golden form and uh from here dispo gets right back up and he powers back up to his uh his super speed mode and uh you know if you're a wrestling fan i thought he legit gohan legit put him in the um in the uh in the million dollar dream but it's actually a chokehold so that was pretty cool <laughs> um yeah i like that and then we get the whole um epic finish to the whole fight where um 
He puts him in the in the death in the uh, in the chokehold and Frieza gets back up. Uh, Gohan, yeah, he's like Frieza, and he's like, I see. Well done, leader. This is indeed a wonderful plan. And just was like, Are you? And Gohan's like, Hurry, <laughs> do it. And Frieza's like, Don't worry, I'll make it quick and easy. And just was like, Stop. <laughs> and Frieza shoots out that one last key blast. My only thing about this is that. The um they did not animate the fighters going out. I would have loved that. Uh, but we get we get the um we get the uh what the god pads where they uh how cool man Apple even uh makes technology for the gods. <laughs> really, <laughs> really, <laughs> that's what they put it in. Um, yeah, he uh yeah he takes so Frieza um so basically they um they eliminate Gohan and Dispo. And uh, before we even get into Gohan with the whole controversy that a lot of fans are mixed on, uh, that was my take. I, I love the whole ending sequence to this. I loved it. Uh, it was really cool. Um, give me, give me uh, your thoughts. As you can see, it got me super hyped up. Uh, how did you like the ending to this fight, to how everything that led to Dispo's um, ending and Gohan and, um, and uh, Frieza teaming up? So, you know me. You've known me for a long time. I hate mm-hmm. that character. I can't stand Gohan. This episode actually really made me like him. Oh, wow. History <laughs> made, folks. This is why I said it was bittersweet um, when we were talking earlier uh, to watch this episode. Yeah, let me because, like, let me uh, let me yeah, give let me give you guys like a little character. quick backstory of what he's what he's referring to. Um I mean, like I said, we we known each other since high school, so we've always had a lot of in-depth uh, conversations regarding the Dragon Ball franchise and one of the things with Lennox is he never liked Gohan because he felt Gohan as a character basically had everything handed to him by Toriyama. And even though he's not the biggest Goku fan, he always respect that Goku uh, at least worked hard, as he put it to me. He worked hard for everything. He loved that Goku and Vegeta worked their butts off for everything, to the exception of the one time Vegeta used uh, Babidi's uh, spell. But that's his big issue. He, he just felt Gohan was always a character that had everything handed to him. So that's why I once told him, like, man, everybody's complaining that Gohan's being buried in Super, and he's all like, yes, yes, Toy, I'm enlisted, yes! <laughs> but, all right. <laughs> that's so not even that. That's the, that's the backstory. Just, Go ahead. He's literally been given the best plot convenience mm-hmm. in the world. He has a hidden potential. What? Like, and that has <laughs> literally been the catalyst for this character. Going leaps and bounds above other characters with little to no effort whatsoever. <laughs> The one time he trained was for the Cell Games. That is the one time in Dragon Ball history, outside of Piccolo training him to actually, you know, learn how to fight. Mm -hmm. The only time you see Gohan really, really training is for the Cell Games. That uh, room of spirit in time when he um, was training with his father and he went Super Saiyan because he uh, he did you know he couldn't stomach the thought of not being able to protect his friends, which followed in line mm-hmm. with the way everyone else went Super Saiyan. And we're talking about Super Saiyan folks in Dragon Ball Z, not the way the tingly back feeling that we eventually found out about. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> well, let's keep the focus here on Gohan. <laughs> but, but yeah, so. When you have a character like that, I just, it's hard for me to get behind them. Mm-hmm. You know, it's really, really hard for me to get behind them. And in this episode, I felt like the training he had to go through to become a fighter. Not only that, but also Gohan's innate, like, intellect as a character. Like, he's really, really smart. We got to see the best of both. Um, You know, we got to see him as a fighter. They even say it. um, Supreme Kai says it. He says, with that cage around Dispo, he won't be able to beat Gohan in a one-on-one brawl. And that's true. Dispo's not a terrible martial artist, but he's nowhere near Gohan's level in terms of combat. Very reliant upon his speed. Exactly. And we saw, ladies and gentlemen, one bad speed did not get him far. <laughs> yeah. But then again, he wasn't Dispo. 
course not. Who, you know, actually knew how to fight. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this foe actually knew how to fight. Oh, man, if Berto was around to see that. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Fastest in the Universe. I my speed is the fastest in the universe. Okay, sure. More like my speed is the fastest in... Uh, uh, but, but... <laughs> Hey, though, if you remember yeah. uh, uh, Tenkaichi 3, he was fun to play as. <laughs> Burrow was busted, but you know what? We're not going to go on a tangent. Right. <laughs> um, but no, it was just nice. Uh, I, I was happy that I got to see kind of a more developed Gohan. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I like the decision making and the fact <laughs> I found it ironic that he went out kind of like his father. Mm-hmm. He pulled a Piccolo and Goku simultaneously. Because if you remember, oh, did that scene how he eliminated you of, Disco. Uh, that, did that scene remind yeah. you when Goku uh, grabbed Raditz? Held scene? Raditz? Yeah, that would have reminded yeah. me of as well, too, outside of the yeah. wrestling reference. That was, that was a perfect callback. And I love how the moment Gohan gets to the stands, Piccolo immediately tells him that was a great call. We can't forget the fact that right before uh, the final blow, uh, before Gohan tried to land the final punch, you had Piccolo, Gohan, do it! (laughs) Yeah, it was just interesting. Also, the look on Belmont's face. (laughs) When that, oh my god. I've never seen a more I've never seen a more animated expression of anger in my entire life. Oh yeah, these expressions are hilarious on the bleachers. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the, the 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 gods have the most dramatic reactions out of anyone, even uh, as opposed to like the teammates that are sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think it's because they're not used to this. Uh, you know, you gotta love how the angels are cool because don't matter us. We ain't dead either way. <laughs> they just cool. <laughs> Fun thing about that, though, I honestly think they don't care just because of how strong they are. So it's one of those things where, like, eh, we've seen this before. Like, I'm almost 100% sure, like, if we were to fight Jiren, Jiren would be dead. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. And we'll, we'll get into <laughs> that uh, a little bit more with Jiren uh, um, later. Um... <laughs> Because I love the fact every god of destruction that's seen his power Mm -hmm. has flinched, but every angel has been like, eh, that's okay. (laughs) And I'm like, wait, what? (laughs) Oh, boy. Um, But yeah, um, now here's some of the things I wanted to bring up about Gohan. This has gotten very mixed reviews, so it'll be interesting to see. You have a section of the fan base, the Dragon Ball fan base, that feels Gohan was not utilized right in this tournament others felt that they did as much with him um you know and i can definitely see both points of view for me personally i thought what we did get with gohan was really good and he he definitely had a huge run in this in this tournament um but i i don't think they they went as far as they could have i i would have loved uh to seen gohan um get you know, it would have been cool if he maybe did get some sort of big power up or attain a god form or something. Um, but granted, to your point, he did obviously have a lot of those uh, <laughs> plot convenience uh, power ups in Dragon Ball Z. So I can understand from that standpoint. Uh, let's use a little bit of WWE logic. I don't know. Would you agree with me that it felt like Gohan was kind of used like, let's say, if we're watching WWE, you have that wrestler that's very talented on the mic, very in good in ring skills, um, and we know they have what it takes to be a main event player but the company decides to just keep them in that upper mid card um tier so they're not going to bring them down to the low card but they're going to bring them in the mid card and i kind of felt like that's kind of where gohan was utilized in this tournament we're going to make sure he gets a, a bigger push than all the humans and piccolo but we're not going to give him to that higher level like goku and vegeta so we're going to keep gohan that like that upper upper mid card or level. even frieza in 17 i did find it awkward because my anticipation was to have 17 get eliminated. That turned out to be false. I was horribly wrong. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll get to 17 later. He, he's been probably my biggest surprise so far, but I'll get to him later. Uh, well, would you agree with that statement, though? The way Gohan um, utilized... Do you, 
and and that's the thing do you a lot of people wish gohan they they wish gohan would have basically i think there might have been some people wanting to see gohan get back to where he was in his cell saga maybe goku and vegeta get eliminated and gohan is the one to beat jiren and they were hoping that but i can also no my thing is i i feel like <laughs> that's not where toriyama and the writers that's what they're going they want to really focus on goku and vegeta and it's obvious that's where they want to focus it that's just the reality of the situation that's where they want to focus on so obviously gohan's not going to get that big of a of a huge push so i i can say i wasn't expecting i i was actually more for vegeta getting the big moment which so far it looks like he's evenly with goku having the spotlight um i i do agree with some other anything i say vegeta's edging him right now Mm mm-hmm because effectively, I think Vegeta successfully landed more hits against Jiren. Oh yeah, just as until, a fighter. Until Goku reaches Ultra Instinct, and then it's back to what me and Little Miss Undead were cracking up last week uh, when we did our review of Episode One Twenty Two: The Pecking Order. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> uh, but um, you know what? I you know no, I'm saying it's hard to call Pecking Order right uh, now because like Vegeta's matched him. At every stage of this, correct. Yeah, he's been he's been utilized a little bit more evenly. Uh, I mean, and like let's let's him let's and not him, all... and, him and Goku been a lot more even in Super. Yeah, let's not like act brand new. We all know it's gonna come down to Vegito versus Jiren. Oh wow, you think that? I, I've seen. If you haven't seen all the promotional material, it's Goku with his shirt off up against Jiren. That's like basically where this finally probably ends up. Um, no, I mean, what does who does Vegito look like? He looks like Goku. We can get to Vegeta a little bit later, though. But um, I was going to uh, just say focus here on Gohan. Uh, something else as well with Gohan that I know some others who were not maybe expecting him to get the big, uh, the big like, final heroic push like Goku probably and Vegeta at this moment. Uh, we And I do think there were some missed opportunities to see uh, moments where Gohan basically is fighting for Videl and Pan and just kind of interpreting that into his character. Uh, into his character for what he's fighting for um and everything uh like we saw he had the emotional um scene um which i thought was really cool when i think that was the first elimination um i think the guy's name was obunin that was um the green guy that gohan fought yeah powerful because when the locket drops right once he gets eliminated right because and then once they get erased gohan opens it up and sees he has a wife and child yeah and you knew that that hit home with him because he's got pan and videl waiting for him back home so it would have been nice we had some more emotional moments it would have been cool we've seen some more even piccolo asked him he was like Gohan, you okay? <laughs> right. And him and like, Piccolo that, got some good moments too in this tournament. It would have been nice to see him and Gohan, Goku do some more. Roshi cool power had rounds. some good moments in this tournament. Oh yeah, for sure. But I'm like, only person who got body right out the gate was Krillin. Oh, uh, that was bogus. <laughs> at least, at least Tien took somebody with him. <laughs> <laughs> um, and apparently, uh, uh, let's see, I hope I'm saying this right. Lazui, uh, 18, Juachi Go, she cares more to sit next to. Piccolo than uh, Kuden, but it's fine because they they kind of hinted at that uh, at the end of DBZ. We do know a eighteen is a lot more harsher towards uh, Kuden, so uh, that's fitting. That um, that's fitting. That uh, sorry, you guys heard my phone go off there. <laughs> uh, that's fitting. That uh, basically being continuity where DBZ is going at it. Uh, but I don't want to get too off the rails with so multiple stuff. I want to just keep a focus on Gohan right now. Um, I think that's basically, I think I covered everything that people have had issues with Gohan. Out of those, uh, do you felt like there was, what was your just response to like the community, uh, the Dragon Ball community and how we've had so many mixed reactions with Gohan? Do you agree there were certain it's... sections that could have been used better? It's, no. Uh, okay. Um, no, and the only reason I feel that way is because we've kind of seen where Gohan peaks. Um, you know, he he's no match for his father in Super Saiyan Blue. and it's funny because now that I think well, about I it, remember, he, he was ma- he was matching him in Super Saiyan Blue. Goku had to go Super Saiyan Blue with the Kaioken in order to beat Gohan's ultimate form. If I remember in the training, but you know, there's so much that could be said about that. We saw Goku at Super Saiyan Blue using a Kamehameha against Kruden at 18 knocked away. So that's let's, what I'm let's not get it's, into power It's hard scaling. to tell when Goku's holding back and when he's not. That's you the know power what I mean? scale issue in Super, right? <laughs> So, and, like, they tried using that for him to give us kind of an idea of how these fighters stack up. But my problem with that is that you have 17 
who is Kiki being up with Topo, who basically is a god of destruction. Um, excuse me? How? <laughs> see, I was shocked to see that he was creeping up with Goku Super Saiyan Blue, let alone, you know, he, he's fighting Topo and not doing bad. <laughs> It's interesting. I'm very curious about this next episode because it's highly centered around Topo. Before we get to that one, um, but you, you do feel Gohan was utilized correctly? Oh, yeah. In terms of, like, how he was used, Gohan had some pretty heavy-hitting eliminations. Um, He did a good majority of the eliminations for Universe 7. He sure did. Like, people forget. Like, right. guys, Gohan is probably responsible for a good reason of why... 30, maybe 45% of the tournament in trees ended up back in the stands. Correct. Like, that man put in mad work. And a lot of the more difficult opponents, like the snipers, him and Piccolo dealt with that. Like, that, yeah, Gohan, Gohan did his job. Um, He did what they needed him to do. And that was take out the fighters that were more about deceiving you know tactics and you know the more strategic unorthodox like those fighters he eliminated them and i think that was more beneficial to the team as a whole because guys you got to remember this is a numbers game and right now universe 7 has been winning the entire tournament mm -hmm. <laughs> universe 7 has been winning in the numbers game the entire tournament um currently right now what it's four to two because you got Frieza, 17, Vegeta, and Goku, to Topo and Jiren. And see, I, that's why I feel like, I do, I feel like Gohan's got to use like an upper mid, mid card uh, character in, in this arc. Uh, he got a lot of great moments, but he didn't get up to where Goku and Vegeta. But the thing is, like I said, I understand where they wanted to go. They're focusing Vegeta and Goku on that, in that story, in this, this arc. So, um... I guess you get you get about the best you could get out of Gohan d based on where they wanted to go with the story. Uh, I, I think we could put it this way that us Gohan fans can be happy and just just everybody who's a fan of Gohan. Uh, it's not the absolute worst because if we look at Dragon Ball Super as a whole, which I do feel Gohan and I know you you were happy. I do feel uh, Gohan was underutilized a lot in Dragon Ball uh, Super. But when we look at how he was used compared to the ending of Arc, at least this is the best usage they've, they've done with him and everything. Um, so I think for, for what it is, it's about the best we, we could get based on where they want to go with the story. Yep. And um, so getting on to the next episode that's going to be coming out... Um, so we see that the Hakaishin energy is unleashed by Topo. He's got the shirt off. He's ready to do battle. So he's going to take on Lapis and Frieza while, uh, while Goku and Vegeta continue to do battle in the background with Jiren. So obviously there won't be much uh, focus on that fight. But here we um, here we will be getting... Um, we will be getting uh, a really interesting uh, fight because I man the shot that they had at the ending of the preview where he's purple like oh my I'm like oh <laughs> Topo is yeah. ready to wreck some stuff <laughs> yeah yeah oh. but remember 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 and this this leads me to I'm curious about something because I'm wondering if there are tears to the god of destruction and how different they are. I mean, obviously they are. Beerus has said, you know, that they're a god of destruction stronger, or Whis has said that they're a god of destruction stronger than Beerus. So obviously there are some that are stronger than others. But when it comes to the Hakai energy in particular, my question is, does that change as well? Because if you remember, <clears throat> it was universe, what? Yeah, I'm going to say universe nine, but if need be, Guys, just, you know, just drop a comment below. Let me know who was the uh, first universe eliminated. Um, but the reason why I mention that is because we've seen Frieza control... Okay, we've seen two instances of this, actually. We've seen Frieza not only get hit by the Hakai energy, but control it. But then there's also the flip side. Goku in normal form. Frieza hit him with it. And although Goku didn't take it off, Goku didn't die. He had a hard time so, getting out of it, I remember. Well, he got hit in his normal form. Yeah. <laughs> so, here's the, the energy. I mean, or, here's here's my theory. Because Beerus was able to easily... He, like, he just blew it off of Goku. 
Does the Hakai energy also, is it dependent on how strong the god is? Because my theory is Frieza might try to do exactly what he did back then if Topo uses it. And I got a feeling Frieza might be the next one eliminated. I literally have a feeling because now he's in golden Frieza form. And that is when he kind of shot back the Hakai energy. So I'm hoping, I hope it doesn't happen, but I got a feeling that when Topo shows he can use that energy, Frieza's arrogance as a fighter is going to tempt him to try to bounce it back, and he's not going to be able to handle it. Interesting. Yeah, that's the reason why I'm really interested in the episode, because I remember uh, when Frieza took control of the Hakai energy, and um, I'm basically like, oh boy, this is going to be interesting to see how he, how he uh, deals. And this actually leads me to what we were going to talk about earlier with Lapis, uh, Android 17, Dragono, um like uh it's interesting so let's say frieza does get eliminated then that means uh he is left at uh he's the final three for universe seven and i'm like wow lapis is actually lasting a long time here toriyama obviously like we said in the last review getting giving him a lot of love i'm i'm uh, this is obviously not gonna happen but how much how hilarious would it be if 17 ends up surviving and winning everything who the heck saw that coming wow yeah! <laughs> hey they really want to mess with people's minds if they really want to mess with people's mind let's say Jiren defeats Goku and Vegeta and then 17 he's like I will channel a power that I'm afraid that would actually destroy me but I have no choice and then basically he transforms into Super 17 from DBGT and just wipes the floor with Jiren <laughs> don't take that serious that's not gonna happen folks that's just my little hilarious uh, if theory. that would if that, happen if that happened, how hilarious would that be I'm, we're just talking about of course it's not gonna happen but that would be hilarious like wow you I know what nobody I've would, learned nobody would see it coming I but wow man <laughs> i've learned to never say never get, when wonder. it comes to dragon ball I, I i don't know if that would get heat or if that would get praise that's the scary thing about because that because it's dbgt uh praise because wow whoever thought like if okay well, super 17 was the one thing people liked from dbgt so that's what i'm saying i don't think it'd be bad right, 17 17 getting a huge win but uh yeah that'd be that, that'd be interesting but no i um yeah, I, I'm actually interested. I'm like, 17 lasted this long. Like, man, that, I did not see that coming. So I, I am pleasantly surprised by that. Mm -mm. So that's where we're going to go on that episode. But once again, I know we had a long discussion. So um, we shall wrap things up here with episode 124 review. Uh, once again, you have the plug. Uh, you have the floor to plug. Uh, go ahead, Linux. Um... Yeah, guys, uh, if you definitely enjoyed um, everything here and you, you know, want to give me a shout out or even if you just want to talk DBZ stuff, uh, feel free to follow me on Twitter at the Linux virus or check out my YouTube. Um, I'm a fighting game enthusiast. Um, I will be posting content throughout the year of 2018. So if you're into fighting games or anything of that nature, I know Dragon Ball Fighters drops uh, this upcoming Friday. So definitely, definitely go support that. Um, if you guys want to see videos and play of that, check out my YouTube channel um, at the Linux Virus. All right. And then basically, for as far as when it comes to me, guys, that's where I'll cut that out. So we got those two reviews over. Um, let me see. Is there anything else to say if I want any other video content? Uh, there was one more thing I think we were trying to talk about. Was it the ending, super ending? So if you obviously are a fan of Dragon Ball, Shonen Manga, or anime adapted from Shonen Manga, make sure to check out my upcoming short film, Battle of Deception, as it's based on those types of genres. I currently have lots of videos such as the teaser trailer and the behind the scene interview videos right here on my channel, so make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified as soon as I release more content regarding Battle of Deception, Dragon Ball, and even WWE if you are a professional wrestling fan. And make sure to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter and Instagram, both at Son Goshoku. All links will be in the description below, and we'll be back with more review slash discussions for Dragon Ball Super episodes 125 and 126. Until then, take care.